In this video, I'll walk you through all the basics and tools of Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is one of the most widely used editing softwares in the world. If you are a complete beginner and you don't know anything about Adobe Premiere Pro or video editing, then this video is for you. I have also provided all the media files for you to download and follow along. Link is in the description. By end of this video, you would know how to edit a video like this. So let's get started. So first you would need Adobe Premiere Pro. You can go to Adobe's website and download it. They also provide a 7 day free trial where you can see if it's really the right fit for you. Once you open Premiere Pro, you'll see the screen. Here click on new project. You can name the project. I'll name it by montage one. And after that you can click on the project location and select where you want to save it. After that on the bottom right, click on create. Once you open it, you'll see these four sections. If you are seeing anything else, just go to windows workspace and click on editing. You can use these bars to change the size of each section. Just in case you mess up, you can just go back to workspace and reset to save layout. Now on the bottom left, this is the project monitor where we import clips. On the bottom right, we have timeline where the actual edit takes place. On the top right, we have program monitor where we see the actual video clips. And on the top left, we have source monitor. Now to start editing, you need clips. Now there are multiple ways to import clips. First is double click on the project monitor. So you double click here and now you can select where your clips are and then open. Another way is you right click on the project monitor and click on import. You can either select one clip or multiple multiple at the same time. And the third way to do is go to file and then click on import. The same thing. So after importing all the media files, we'll organize them in folders. So after that, you need to click on this new bin button or you can select all the clips and then drag it to new bin button and it will create a folder. You can also directly import complete folders. For example, double click on the project monitor and then click on the folder you want to import and imp click on import folder. Similarly, I'll import other folders. You can also use Ctrl I to import files. Now we want to select the part from each video that we'll use in the edit. Now for that, go to the clips folder and double click on the clip and then you'll see it on the source monitor. Another way to do is you can directly drag the clip to source monitor. Now here you can scrub through the clip and select the part you want. To select the in point, click on I on the keyboard and then to select out point, click O on the keyboard. Another way to do it is click mark in here and then click mark out here. Now once you drag this video to the timeline, you'll, you'll see that new tab has opened. This new tab is called a sequence. A sequence is where the actual edit takes place. Most of your editing arrangement effects will require a sequence and within that sequence the editing will take place. Now there are multiple ways to create a sequence. First one is directly drag and drop the video on the timeline and it will create a sequence. Second way is to click on this new item button and then click on sequence. Now after that you can select what settings do you want. For example we need 1920 by 1080 which is HD format and 25 frames per second. Once you do that click on OK and now you can see one sequence has been created. Now if you drag the clip on the timeline, you'll notice that it gives us a warning because the clips we are using are in 2K and the edit will be in 1080p. So that's all right, you can say keep existing settings. Now you have three options. You can either drag the video alone by doing this. Second, you can drag just the audio if the clip has audio by clicking and dragging this audio button. Third option to move the clip to the timeline is clicking on this override button which will directly add it on the timeline. Or you can also use the shortcut which is dot on the keyboard. So just press it and it will add it to the timeline. So the timeline is where the actual edit takes place. You'll see that timeline is divided in two sections. One is the video section and the other is audio section. You'll also notice this blue bar which is called the playhead. Whatever is under the playhead will be shown on the project monitor. So for example, if there are two videos on top of each other, the video which is on top will be shown. But that's not the case for audio. So all the audios which are below the playhead will be played at the same time. After that, let's talk about the tools. The first one is selection tool, which is V on the keyboard, which is used to move things around. So you can just click on V and then click on a clip and move it around on the timeline. Second is the razor tool, 
which we use to create a cut in the video. For example, I want to cut it here and then click on the video. It will create a cut. Now I can delete the second video clicking on delete. And the third important tool is type tool. You can just click on T and then type anything. Now you'll notice that it has created a separate layer for the text. And since the text is over the video, we are able to see it. Let's say we want to hide the text. We can just click on this eye icon and it will hide it from the project monitor. Similarly, on the audio side of things, you can mute a music track or you can solo it. Solo means only that music track which has been soloed will play. After that, to expand the timeline horizontally, you can click on this button and then drag it. Same for vertically, you can use this and drag it and open the tracks. You can also move individual tracks up and down. Now each media file, let's say a photograph or a video has some properties. For example, if you click on this video and then go to effects control, you'll see these multiple options under motion, which is position, scale, rotation, anger point. So for example, if you want to scale it out, since it's a 2K video and the sequence setting is in 1080p, we need to scale the video down, correct? And then move it till it fits the project monitor. So let's make it 51. Similarly, you can play around with the position, rotation and also the opacity. Opacity is the transparency of the clip. For example, let's make it 50 or 38 and then it has become darker. So just in case you mess up, there's no need to get afraid. You can press Ctrl Z which is undo and it will get back to normal. Now, for example, this text that we have on screen, we want to move it. So again, you can click on the layer and then go to effects control and then move it around, right? Now let's say you have to move the text from left to right between 1 to 2 seconds. For that we would have to create a keyframe. So what is a keyframe? So keyframe basically marks a point in time where you can specify a value. So for example, at this point, at 1 second, I want the text to be on the left. So I can go click on the text layer and then go to effects control. And this you see this icon which is called the toggle animation. You can click on it and it will create a keyframe which which means at this time the text will be at this position and then at two seconds i'll move ahead and then change the position to right side and now you'll see on the upper timeline it has created another keyframe so from when we move from one to two seconds the text will also move from left to right now we can hide the text layer and let's say you want to speed up the clip so you want to make it go faster so for that you can right click on the clip and click on speed duration. So let's say you change it to 200%. So as you see, it has been moved ahead in the timeline and it is much faster now. Similarly, you can also slow it down. And final thing, let's talk about color correction. So for that, click on the clip and then go to Windows Workspace Color. This is the color workspace. Now on the right side, you'll see Lumetri Colors where you can adjust the exposure, lighting, contrast, etc. Just like any photo editing software, right? Now that you know all the basics of the software, let's start the edit. For that, let's go back to editing, go to Windows, Workspace, and then editing. And let's start from the beginning. So for the first step is assembly. And then after importing the clips, you can start selecting the area you want from each of the clip. So to do that, we'll double click on the clip in the program monitor and then press I for endpoint and then O for outpoint and then drag it to the timeline to create a sequence. Similarly, perform the same step for all the clips so you know what you have in the clips and after that arrange them on the timeline. You can do the same for the music track, double click on the music track and then select in and out point. We are looking to edit a 20 to 25 seconds video so select music accordingly. One important thing to notice the video we are editing will be edited according to the music. So we would have to cut to the beats. Now once assembly is done, we'll move on to editing, which is the second step. Here we'll see which shots will go in the starting, which shots cut together well, and also arrange the shots in a way that they tell a story. Ideally, you would want to place the shots which have the same movements next to each other. So for example, I have placed the first clip, which is the guy starting the bike and the same movement from the wide angle right after that. Now another thing is the music beat drops here, if you can see here, right? So I want to cut it here. Now there are multiple ways to do it. Okay, so first one is you go and go to the edge of the clip and you'll see this red tool, which is called the trim tool. You can just drag and move it here, right? And now the clip cuts here on the beat. But if you do that, now you would have to manually move everything ahead. 
Now this time that you do it, just hold control on the keyboard and then drag it. Now you'll see the tool has turned yellow. Now everything has moved ahead with the cut. Now let's say you want to adjust both of these clips at the same time. So for that, drag and select both the clips and then press control. Now you can move between both the clips. Similarly, you can keep adjusting and cutting between the beats. Here if you see there are 4 fast beat on the music tracks so similarly I have added 4 really fast cuts. Now once the basic edit is done let's move on to adding some effects. First of all when, you, when the beat drops I want some cool flashlights kind of effect. So for that I would go to this shape tool, rectangle tool and then create a rectangle right. So if you see a new layer has been created. So now I'll trim it again so it's just over the beads. And now to edit the graphic I'll go to Windows, Workspace and Captions and Graphics. Now click on Edit and then you'll see this layer which is the shape layer. I'll change the color to white. Also where you see the align so I can center and vertically align it right so that it covers the screen the video to be visible after every other frame for so for that i'll create a lot of cuts between all the frames so i'll just zoom in and starting here so now i'll add a cut after every frame now i'll delete all the alternate frames so for that you can select one then press shift and select everything else and click on delete once done so now if you see we have this really cool effect with the beat. Now I want to add a cinescope which is basically a bar on the top and a bar on the bottom which will make the video look more cinematic. So to do that first we'll go to project monitor again and then click on new item and click on adjustment layer. You can think of adjustment layer as an empty layer on which we can add effects for the whole edit. So for example I'll just drop it on the timeline and then drag it so it covers the entire thing now after that i'll go to fx and go to crop now if you click on the adjustment layer and go to effects control you'll see the crop that crop has been added here now i want the top to have 10 percent of crop and bottom to have 10% again. Now you'll see there's a bar on the top and the bottom. Another cool effect is I want it to be completely black and then open up. For that I'll just click on top and bottom here. Add a keyframe. So at 1 second I want it to be at 10 10 seconds and I'll move the keyframes here. And in the starting I want it to be 50 50% so it covers the screen. So now it opens up like this. Second thing, let's add an overlay on the first clip. So to do that, go to the overlays folder and select the clip. Now go to the blend mode option in the effects control and change the blending mode to screen. So that it overlays on the videos like this. I also want a text on the beginning. So for that, use this text tool and type the text. So we'll write bike. Now to adjust the text, go to Windows, Workspace and Captions and Graphics. Here if you click on Edit, you'll see the text here. Now you can center it using these align options. So click on Center Align and Vertically Align and increase the text size. Change the font to something else. Now I want the clip to be visible only inside the text. So to do that click on the clip and right click and click on nest. Now select the nested sequence and search for track mat key. Now once you have pasted the layer go to effects control and now inside track mat key change the mat to video 2 which is basically where the text layer is pasted and now you'll see that the text has been inverted and the video is only visible inside the text and now we have this cool effect with us okay this already looks pretty good now we can also add some speed ramps so for example 
this clip if you zoom in you can make it you can make the timeline bigger vertically by dragging these handles now if you right click on this clip and click on time remapping and click on speed you'll see that this bar is here this is basically speed so if you increase the bar the speed will increase similar to speed duration that we saw earlier right now what i want to do is that the clip starts fast then slows down and then goes fast again so for that you would have to use the pen tool you see the pen tool here click on the clip where you want it to slow down so we'll click here and then go fast again so we'll click again here now both the fast parts just drag it up so around 300 percent for both and you can move these handles and make it more smooth So now this is what we have. Once the effects and transitions are done, we'll move on to sound design and color correction. So for sound design, so right now for the music track, the music ends very abruptly. Right? So to change that, what we'll do is we'll cut a small part of the audio track right when the beat is dropping and then we'll move it to a different audio track. And now we'll go to audio track mixer. If you don't see it, you can go to windows and then audio track mixer, right? Now, these are all the tracks, A1, A2, A3, right? In this, in this, in A2, we'll click on this arrow and go to, we'll click on this arrow and we'll go to reverb. And then we'll go to studio reverb. Now, if you double click on the effect and change the decay to 10,000, you'll notice that the song echoes now. Right? Now you can add an audio transition to that basically so that it dissolves slowly. So for that you can press Ctrl Shift D and it will add constant power to it. You can either add color correction to an adjustment layer over the entire clip or you can individually color correct the clips. So to do that click on the clip and then go to windows, workspace and color. Now you can adjust the color here, increase the contrast or maybe reduce the highlights, right? And then once done, you can copy the effects from it and paste on everything or you can individually color correct the clips. Now after that, I want to add a cinematic look to the edit. So for that, I'll add a color alert. You can think of color alert as filters on Instagram, right? So now we'll create another adjustment layer. We'll add it to the timeline. So for that, click on the adjustment layer and go to Lumetri color. And now if you see inside basic correction, you will see input LUT. Click browse on that and I have given one LUT in the folder. You can use that. For this video, I'll use teal and orange LUT. So just open it and now you will see it looks way better. But the colors are too strong. So I'll just click on the adjustment layer and change the opacity, which is the transparency of the layer to 50%. So now once the edit is done, it's time to export your video. So for that, you can move to the end of the video where the video ends, right? And press O. What this will do is this will create an in and out point on the timeline, right? Now to export the video, press Ctrl M. Now you'll see multiple options. First, you can name the file. So you can name it anything and then choose the location. In the preset, you can select high quality 1080p HD. And after that, you see there's an option called format. In that, we'll select H.264. After this, you can just click on export and your video will be ready. If you have followed along till now, do share your works with me. I would love to see what you guys have created. Do let me know if you like this video. Also share this video with your friends if you think it will be helpful for them. Like this video and subscribe for more valuable content. And I'll see you in the next video.